All right, friends, it's a little bit after eight o'clock, uh, still early in the world of brown drakes. We got plenty of time. Uh, got my stuff on and walked down to the river and there's a few sulfurs hatching. I saw a few drakes, but we're still probably about an hour from things busting wide open. So I thought I'd take just a couple of minutes and uh, show you some of the things that I carry with me, some of the things that are important to me um, when I'm out drake fishing. And of course, first and foremost, everybody wants to know about the rods and the leaders and such. And what I've, uh, what I've come to conclude is the best, the best rod for this job. If you're only carrying one rod, this new TFO drift rod is absolutely the answer. And the fact that uh, the first thing I'm gonna do when I get down to the river, I, I don't see any fish rising right now. So I'm gonna drag a nymph and uh, trail a soft tackle, a merger behind it. So with this drift rod, I can set it up, uh, and I'm sure you've seen this before, but I can set this up to be an 11 foot rod. Boom, it's strung up. Do this one, boom, it's strung up. So I can start off nymphing, which I've got a, a spot right downstream of us here that I know there's been some big fish laying. Of course, I'm uh, hoping to catch them eating brown drakes here in a little while, but prior to the hatch, um, these, these nymphs get super active and they're swimming around, swimming up to the surface. So throwing a, a, a nymph rig, and there's basically two different nymphs that I like. Um, I've got this basic beadhead brown drake nymph that we sell at the shop and then I tie a wiggle drake uh, that I'll show you a picture of and I'll be sure to do a YouTube uh, tutorial on how to tie that fly. And then I trail a soft tackle behind it like a pheasant tail soft tackle, big one size 10, or I also tie a specific drake emerger soft tackle. And that can be deadly, you know, starting six o'clock, even earlier during the day when the uh, drake catch is expected. Um, and uh, if the fish aren't rising yet, uh, you gotta go below the surface. You're typically not gonna bring them up until we get naturals. Uh, so the moral of the story is I can nymph with this 11 foot uh, drift rod and then when the hatch starts up, I can easily change my leader over to a dry fly leader, remove two foot and I'm down to a nine foot three weight. That's really all I need. Um, and switch it over to a nine foot four X liter appropriate for dry flies and then get the hatch, which is usually right around dark until about 10, 10, 15. Um, so uh, the dry flies, there's a couple of patterns that compare a Drake that we sell at the shop. And then also once it gets dark, the glow Drake spinner. Uh, you may have seen this on our website on Facebook. This thing is absolutely critical. I'll show you when we get on the water, but the parachute post wing glows in the dark. So after it's too dark to see, that's the secret. That's how we get these fish um, on, on dries after dark is that parachute uh, post wing. So um, really, really super cool. But one thing with my dry flies, uh, it's a good idea. Soak them in either Flyagra or your, or your favorite liquid. I've been using this high and dry uh, from, um, from high and dry fishing products. They're liquid floating, but you soak your dry flies. That way they're all dressed up and ready to go and you don't have to mess with floatant. Um, if I'm floating in my boat, I, I bring two rods. I've got the nymph rod set up with a nymph and a soft tackle or a merger behind it. And then I've got my dry fly. I've got an eight and a half foot four weight rigged up with a dry fly and ready to go. That way I don't have to switch things out. Uh, but tonight we're probably just gonna be walking uh, with one rod and therefore the TFO drift is, is the way to go. A um, Couple of other things, my UV light, which I hope I remembered to bring. I think I did, yes I did. That UV light, I'm gonna hit that parachute post on the Glow Drake and it's just gonna be like a beacon out there on the water and that's the secret to catching fish after dark. Uh, another couple of things, uh, make sure to have a water bottle. It's usually hot and humid when we're drake fishing. Those are gonna be the best evenings. Carry a water bottle with you. 
And then uh, I'm gonna switch out my glasses right now to my yellow lens. Uh, it's gonna be lower light when we get down into the river. And then I'm gonna carry with me also a pair of clear lenses. Once it gets too dark for even the yellow lenses, I'll switch over to the clear lenses. Uh, remember that you always wanna have your eyes protected when you're out there on the water, uh, especially after dark. So I'll have my clear lenses with me. I'll have my yellow lenses on to start. So that's about it. Uh, I only need two fly boxes. I've got my Drake box, which has my dries, nymphs, and some spinners, although there's really only two flies I use. Um, and then I've got a sulfur box. It's very likely you're gonna see sulfurs hatching at the same time. They may start up around eight o'clock and you can get fish rising to the sulfur. So I'll have my sulfur box with me as well. So uh, let's, let's get into position, man. This should be epic. As will often happen prior to the drakes, prior to the big show, uh, you're going to have sulfurs hatching and that's what we've got right here. I've got some fish eating sulfur emergers. Uh, I'm going to put on an emerger pattern here and see if we can't uh, catch a couple before the show starts here. Typical, we got fish eating sulfurs. And when they're eating sulfurs here on this river, man, they are picky. It's, it's so funny, you'll have these picky fish and they're only eating emergers and you gotta get a perfect drift. And then a half hour later, they'll eat anything that you throw at them once the drakes get started. Uh, but it's always cool to catch a fish on a sulfur. I've actually had three hooked just right here. And this is a stretch of water, friends, that. Uh, probably 10 people fished through today and they would swear that there's no trout here and then you come when the hatch is going on like this. I mean we've seen sulfurs, both the Inveria and the Dorothea, the 16 the 18. We've seen light K hills, we've seen March browns and I'm starting to see some drakes. Um, I've seen some drake adults uh, riding on the water, I've seen some drake spinners and we had a couple of big eaters. Uh, here's a sulfur right in front of us. Um, yeah. I tell you, I was, I was, this is what I was hoping for. It's been a tough dry fly season here on the MAD, um, and I was just thinking everything would come together, and sure enough, I'm looking at spinners, I'm looking at adults behind us. I can probably see four or five fish. Uh, another thing that you always wanna look for is the birds. The birds are gonna tell you when things are starting to happen. Um, I, don't see, uh, I don't see any bugs up in the sky yet, but we're probably still 20 minutes, a half hour away. Uh, and when it happens, this, it'll almost go dark with, with brown drakes. Um, and we've had a couple of people that say, oh, I saw the spinners, they were up in the sky, but no fish were eating them. Well, think about that for a second. Yeah, they're in the sky. No fish are gonna eat them out of the sky. You gotta wait it out. You gotta wait, you gotta be in a good position where you think fish are. And once the spinners come down, they mate and they start to fall on the surface of the water. That's when it all happens. Um, and that's, uh, I also forgot to mention uh, right here, very important piece of gear during the drakes. Um, also my magnifiers, I gotta be able to see. Uh, in fact, uh, I may fish, yeah, I got another riser over here. Let me see if I can catch him.
Well, it's about 10.30, folks. We just got off the river. Uh, I never did get a chance to throw the nymph rod. Uh, by the time we got in the river, fish were eating sulfurs and eating them pretty good. Uh, got a couple fish on sulfurs. I think three eats, two fish to hand. Uh, but keep in mind that, that, that throwing those nymphs and the emergers, even a soft tackle to re resemble a brown drake prior to the hatch uh, can be excellent. Um, and, and even as we were just walking out of the river, the sheer number of bugs was just staggering. Uh, it really didn't happen tonight. Got a couple of fish to eat, uh, the drakes, uh, but didn't see really any bigger fish eating them. My guess is, of course, that uh, uh, you know we had a little cold front come blow through this afternoon. I think that probably put them off. But the truth is, the drakes, they're so addicting, but probably seven out of 10 times, it just doesn't happen the way you think it should. Uh, but that's drake fishing. Thanks for watching. We're going to go get a bite to eat.